so today we're going to learn a bit about the git version control system and how to use github in our project that will be the key to all the development uh, that we are going to do in the labs uh, and on your own in your projects okay uh, on one of the first uh, classes i distributed some leaflets about git if somebody is still missing them uh, just uh, maybe next time in the lab I will bring them or just ask I still have some in, uh, in my office uh, available okay so uh, what's the idea the idea is that uh, we need uh, when development de developing to have some sort of uh, help uh, some sort of support uh, to help us managing uh, the code that, that we are writing even in the simplest of the cases so in the simplest case uh, maybe you are working alone you only have one computer and uh, you're developing something so what do you need while developing well first of all backups so what happens if something fails if your computer breaks up if your hard disk doesn't start up anymore okay and this happens always okay sooner or later it's not if it's when uh, your hard disk is broken when you go home your computer will not start when you sh shut down your laptop it will not start up again it will happen one day okay for sure so I will I will be fine with that I have a backup of everything it just takes me time to recover I will never lose one bit of data so should you okay I'm sure you always have uh, an updated backup up to yesterday of everything you, uh, on your computers. Uh, so, but once it's uh, having a copy of the data, once it's having a structured copy of the source code in your, in your development tree, uh, we can do that by hand, okay? I, I make a copy on Dropbox or I have a copy on an external drive or whatever, but uh, uh, it may happen that oh, since it relies on uh, manual actions on my side i'm never sure i will do that huh? uh, this making copies is something that we always uh, postpone until tomorrow and uh, it's not just uh, make having a backup of the last copy but maybe i'm developing something and i'm doing something wrong now so something that worked one month ago is not working anymore today. So I want to go back to the version that I had one month ago to check the differences and say, what did I change? What did I modify? Uh, where did I insert a new mistake? So it's not just having the latest copy, having a mirror of the latest version, but it's also having the possibility of going back to a specific version of your code in the past. This is what we need. If we use them more than one computer, this is even more important. Because we need a way of keeping in sync, not just the computer and the backups, but different computers. I'm working on the laptop and I also have a computer in the office and I also have a computer at home. So how can I be sure that what I'm writing on the laptop will not be overwritten when uh, I'm writing something else on my home computer or how do I keep the latest version updated? Hmm? Uh, again, we can do that manually, but uh, you can imagine that it's always difficult to keep uh, uh, the latest version always. And also, if I modify a file in two different places, how do I detect the collision? How do I detect uh, the fact that the files are modified twice and uh, I, don't, I don't want to risk overwriting a modified version with another modified version modifying in a different way hmm? because otherwise I would lose work huh? and this is a thing I don't want it to happen and uh, so we need some tools for helping us with that even more if we are working in team if there are more than one people so if you have ever worked with some friends for example to create a project together or even to write a document together okay it's quickly transforms into an email hell situation in which you have a lot of emails uh, of files with strange names and you, you never know which is the latest version 
and uh, you start circulating fragments of, of documents uh, and you don't know how to put them together until somebody says, okay, stop everybody, I will collect the contribution and I will edit and I will integrate. So you need to switch uh, to a centralized method of creating documentation and not a, a, on a team effort. So we want to discover what are the tools that will allow us to work effectively as a team uh, so that we can always be sure that uh, we can always know which part was modified by whom. We can always be able to integrate easily the work of different people. Everybody should be updated on the latest version of everything without needing to send emails and uh, get notification and get the latest version that today is already modified and uh, a lot of bad things that happen. Okay? So, uh, specifically, specifically in the source code for, for working on source project on in uh, computer code, uh, there are very good uh, tools for doing that. And they are collectively known as uh, version, version control systems. So systems for controlling, managing the versions of your code, of your project. And uh, it's not new, something that happens since uh, maybe 30 years. The first versions uh, of uh, version control system were local. So a way to keep local backups in your home directory of what you are doing. Then they moved to centralized. So you had one version server and everybody in the work group uh, connected to that uh, centralized server. Right now, the, say, the state of the art uh, is uh, working with distributed uh, version control systems. Means that you have a, a set of peers, different uh, people working on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, and each of them, there is no centralized point uh, where all the code and all the knowledge or the latest versions are stored, but they are distributed among different computers. And this is what Git is, uh, and this is what uh, uh, we are trying to, to learn today. So first of all, there are some couple of concepts that are common to all uh, um, revision control systems. The basic notion is uh, a repository. A repository is a place where every version that ever existed about the work is stored. So it's a, it's a big list of versions since the beginning when your project had zero bytes, nothing was there until today. Every change, every version, every modifications, every file, every directory, every information about every people that changed, every person that changed ev even one line or even one space in the file is stored there. So that is the history of all the project. Imagine, I imagine that there's a layer cake. There are many layers, and when you update something, you add a new layer on top. So what is visible is the top layer, but all the other layers are still there. And if you need, you can go back, you can slice and go back to a given layer in your cake. Okay? And anyone in the team may have access to all these repository. Anyone in the team may add a new modification, a new layer on top of the repository. So, but having every version of every file is not a convenient way of, for working, for developing. So we have a, a lighter version, so the top slice of our cake, that is called a working copy. So working copy is just a, a dump on the local file system of the files corresponding to one version of the project, usually the, last, the latest one. So you have this repository that contains thousands of versions, one of these versions, imagine the top one, the, la the latest one, the most current one, is uh, extracted from the repository and uh, laid out on your computer, on your files. So this is where you start. You create a project, you are creating a working copy, you are working on this copy, and every now and then you take the new modifications and you pile them up on the repository. You add them to the repository. So a working copy should contain a copy of the files corresponding to a given version plus information about what you changed on these files compared to the version that you had there. So you 
you have the repository, you take the latest version, you open it up in a working copy, you work on this working copy, and by working on that, you add one file, you delete another, and you modify a third file. So this information, this file has been deleted, this has been added, and this has been modified, should be part of the metadata or the information associated with the working copy so that you can integrate the, this modification into the repository on top of the repository when you're ready to do that. Okay, so a working copy is just a snapshot of a version plus information needed to reconstruct uh, what uh, modifications were made. Hmm? This is useful because if you have two different people working on the same version, on, of course, on two different computers, they have each one their own working copy. A working copy is private. You have yours, I have mine, we both work on them. And it's easy to see whether the modification that I make to the project and the modification that you make are compatible or not. Because we know which files I change, which files you change. So if there are no conflicts, uh, then both modifications can be merged into another version of the project. Otherwise, they make conflicts, and so we need to agree uh, on what happens. So actually, uh, developing is a sort of a back and forward among the working copy and the repository. Whenever I do some work, I'm always working, remember, I'm always working on the working copy. Whenever I do some work, I want to freeze it to record the modifications before going further on. And the operation, the concept is the, of committing. Committing the changes in the working copy to the repository. Means uh, creating a new slice for the cake with the, with the status of the current state of the working copy. So every time I commit, of course, the version control system should check that what I'm modifying is consistent. The files that I'm loading have, haven't been modified by other people at the same time and so on. So then every system has different rules, but in general, I want to save the new state into the repository. At that point, everything in the working copy can be reconstructed from the repository. I, can also lose, I, I could also lose the working copy. I don't care anymore because it's already stored in the repository. It's very useful, and it's mandatory, I would say, that every time we commit something, we um, write a message, a motivation, a comment. What is in this change? I updated, I corrected this bug, I added new functionality, and so on. Hmm? How often do you commit? Depends on you. I would say every time you add new functionality, you add a new class, you add a new file, it's better to, to, to commit. Mm. You, we don't pay the space in the repository. We don't care. It's better to have a fine history rather than working for one week without committing, for example. So multiple times a day is a good way of working. The reverse is updating. Updating is uh, taking, picking one version of the repository and extracting the files in that to update the contents of the working copy. It can be used for two different use cases. The most common use case is uh, we are working in a team. You did some modifications. You committed this modification to the repository. I want to work on that. So before I add, the, I add my own work, I first want to update my working copy from the latest version of the repository that will include your modifications. So I'm starting fresh from the latest version. So before adding new modification, I update my working copy with the latest modifications from the team. So everybody does some modification, they commit it. And then everybody, before doing further modification, they update so they have the, the same version and it's, a, and it's the latest one. So this is the first we use case is the most common one for the update operation. The second, uh, uh, use case is when you want to go back in history. So yeah, I want to go back to a given version that I know, or maybe it was version one, uh, it was different, so I want to see, I have a copy of that specific version. So I extract and I modify updating my working copy to a previous version. Hmm. Um, 
updating in some way also implies some sort of uh, merging of the files because maybe I'm working on some modified file and the repository has also also has some modifications to the same file or to different files so in a way after an, an update modification uh, after an update operation my working copy will be a merge of other people's modifications in the repository and my own modifications in the working copy and this new merge version will be probably committed later again to the repository so it's always exchanging differences working incrementally and, the, and trying to propagate these differences to everybody so that everybody is on the same page is on the same version these are the these concepts are common to everybody to every source control, source control system and then about the difference between centralized and distributed in a centralized version control system like SVN, for example, which is the most uh, <coughs> popular, you have one repository and many working copies. So you have three developers, each with their own computer, or maybe these two computers are from the same developer, I don't care, and only one server that hosts uh, the repository. Right? So every time you need uh, to commit, you commit to the central repository. Every time you update, you update from the same unique central repository. It's easy. It's simple as an architecture. Uh, it centralized. It has a, a, a little problem that uh, it doesn't scale so well when the number of developers increases first because uh, then you need to coordinate the work of a lot of people over a single shared repository and the second problem is that every time I need to work I need to be connected to the repository to the server I need to have internet connection I can commit or save a version unless I'm connected to the repository so I need always uh, to be connected and in some situation maybe it's not possible so they started to generalize this concept uh, into a distributed version control. And the difference in distributed version control is that every developer, each one of them, also has a full copy of the whole repository. So there is not one single place in the world that hosts the repository with all the versions. Every developer has a copy of everything. We don't care. Disk space is so cheap. We don't care if you're wasti wasting uh, many megabytes or whatever for a project. You're more interested in the functionality <laughs> rather than in the, the, the megabytes that we spare. Okay? Today is not an issue. Then, of course, these repositories are not real copies. No, you are just storing the compressed differences so they don't grow so much. But Forget about the space issue. We don't care. So everybody has the full history of the project copied on their computer. And so they can commit and update locally without connection to, the, to other repositories and without coordinating their work with other developers. Okay, if these two agree on doing something together, they can work on their local repository and exchange, exchange their changes without involving all the others. You know, this model was developed, uh, was first thought, uh, proposed by uh, Linus Torvalds uh, for working on the kernel of Linux itself. And the kernel of Linux, uh, with all the drivers and so, has thousands of developers. So you could never reach a consensus among a thousand people. You need to have a way for different groups uh, to work on different parts without coordinating or without seeking approval from others. So every developer as a full repository can work locally, but you can also have external repositories. I'm not calling them centralized because they're not central anymore. And maybe you may also have more than one external repositories on a public server, 
on a server somewhere else. So that is a sort of a, you know, something on my computer is only accessible if you know the password of my computer, and it's if the, my computer is wrong, and so on. And so you may have a copy of the repository on some other server, which is outside, which is always connected, always on, onto a cloud service somewhere, which is one additional copy. So right now, we have added one layer of operation. We can have a working copy to commit onto a local repository and the local repository to update a working copy. But in addition, we also have exchange of information between different repositories. And these are operations that are called push and pull. Pushing changes means taking the last uh, modifications that I made on my repository and sharing this information with a remote repository. Remote, you can imagine this one up there on the server. It could also be a remote on another computer. Hmm? But it's more common to have the remote on a shared server because uh, it's more difficult to have access to a single computer. But remote in general, it means an another repository. So I commit to my local repository, and then I push my repository to the server. A two-step operation, Twi two steps every time. And uh, the other way around is pulling. I want to check the repository, pull the latest changes from the center, from my remote repository, integrate them into my local repository, and then if I want, I can pick the local changes and update my working copy. So again, for getting the latest version, I need to first pull and then update. For changing, for saving my changes, I need first to commit and then to push. I always have these two levels. We should always be aware whether our changes are local in our local repository or remote or are synchronized with the remote. It becomes a bit complex. Hmm? It's, uh, it's not easy to grasp at the beginning. Uh, in particular, so this was uh, a general concept for all uh, distributed version control systems. In particular, we now see how Git implements those. Okay? Git uh, was uh, born uh, more than 10 years ago. And you can download it from this uh, web address, but uh, if, you have a, um, if you have a Linux machine, it's already a part of the distribution, usually. And uh, it's designed for managing large projects uh, and for allowing distributed development uh, by large teams or by teams of different people. Okay? Um, it's used, uh, okay, by everybody today. It's a standard uh, for practical new, all new projects. Uh, they use this uh, uh, platform for, for managing their source code. Uh, okay, here there are some, some links if you want to download. Guitar is a set of command line tools. So there are co they are, you have to write comments in the console. There also are some uh, graphical uh, front ends uh, that make it easy, makes it easier to show uh, what's happening and to give comments. In our case, we don't need uh, a, fr a graphical front end because uh, they are already integrated in PyCharm. So if you're working with PyCharm, we, we will see today the comments, the workflow that we need in PyCharm to, um, to manage these repositories. Okay, so I will skip this installation. If you want, you have the link. So I will now move from the slides to the demo. So we are trying to do something together and to see how practically this concept of commit, update, push, and pull. These are the four main primitives for working with a linear sequence of uh, development. It will become more complex. We are not doing that today uh, when you have different branching, different versions that go in parallel. Uh, that will require more complexity, even more complexity. But for now, we just imagine that we have two developers, they are called Marco and Dave, for example, that are trying to work on the same project. So each of them has a local project, 
So a local working copy, a local repository for Marco and uh, the same for Dave. And they collaborate through an online server that is, is used to share and to have the, to integrate and the share the latest modification. Okay, so imagine this picture. Okay, so imagine we are the first user and we work in, uh, what is that, pie charts. We want to create a new project. Okay? Uh, so this is the normal uh, PyCharm window for creating new project. It will be a very simple project, a Python project that we call them, uh, can, we can call it uh, Git test, for example. Let me just check. Uh, okay, yes. Git test. Uh, and we create this project. Okay, up to now, we are not, this project is empty and is not connected to any version, version control system. The version control system in PyCharm is in the VCS menu. Here, all the commands are here. Okay, so what we can do is uh, maybe we can create uh, one Python file, something easy. that tells uh, us that it is good. Hmm? Okay, we have this simple project. It's running, it's okay. What do we have now? I have one file on my project. The first step is uh, to initialize the control system. Right now, this project is not versioned. It's not part of any versioning system. If I delete this file, it's lost forever. Okay? I don't have any record of previous versions or whatever. So first of all, we need to initialize uh, a repository. So, VCS import into version control. Import is a strange way of calling uh, this operation. But what you are doing actually is you have your project and you want to insert, copy this project into a version control system. Which version control system? Git. So the operation that you need is create Git repository here. It's not very intuitive. Uh, don't use my suggestion the GitHub menus here. There are also some voices, we are using GitHub as a service, but the integration of, of the GitHub functions into PyCharms is minimal. So for example, you won't be able to create a project outside your own local private space and so on. So it's, uh, it doesn't have all the functionalities. So we use always the Git menus instead of the GitHub ones, okay? Because they are more complete. So the first operation is, uh, creating a Git repository, and uh, it asks us where do we want to create the repository. A repository in Git is just a directory, a folder, in which Git will store its files. So a good place where to store the repository could be in the same folder in this, uh, of the project. It will create a subdirectory called .git. If you have uh, maybe a computer with two hard disks, it wouldn't be a bad idea to store the Git repository on the second disk. So that in the case of failure of either disk, you don't lose your project. Hmm? But right now we can create that into the project. We don't have the, this reliability issues here. Okay, so right now the project is connected to the repository. You see it down here, git master. Master is the name of the main development uh, branch of our project. Usually, if we don't do anything else, we are working in the master, if we don't create additional branches. So it says that we are actually connected to this uh, branch master. But right now, the repository is still empty. 
Okay, we don't have uh, any, we didn't store any information into that. We just created one repository to host the versions of this project. So the next step would be to save something into the repository, local repository, remember? So VCS, commit changes. So right now we have one project with a working space, and in this working space, we have one modified file, easy.py. It's red. It turned to red because it marks you that it's not updated with the repository. And we have an empty repository linked to this project. So if we want to synchronize them to save this file into the repository, we need to commit. So committing is in BCS commit, or this icon is the same. So send to the VCS, send to a local repository. Uh, not change the text because I first have to add, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay. I, I forgot one step. Uh, he, now he's telling me that there's nothing to modify because first I have to tell him which files need to be committed. Actually, Git is a, every commit operation in Git is again a two-step operation. First, I decide which files I want to commit, and then I commit them locally. And later, I could push them. So the first operation is adding. I selected add Git, so right-click Git, add on the project icon here. I could do that file by file, but if I do that uh, on the top level folder, I will recursively add every, every modified item. So right now, if I try to commit, it will tell me, okay, these are the files you are about to commit. Okay, some of them are in the .idea folder which is uh, all the internal PyCharm uh, project files, metadata. We could commit them or not, it's not so important. And the other is our Python file. So this is the list of the, all the files that have been modified and added for committing. At this point, I need to write a message, first version, for example, of the project, and I can commit it. Okay, I need to define username the first time only. And they committed the first version. I can see the history. No, no, this is not this one. Okay, the Git history. Here we have the history version, and you see the log. It lists you all the versions that are in the local repository. I can uh, modify this. Say, okay, Git is good, Git is very good. And this file has been modified here. I want to update it, to commit it. So once the file has been added uh, the first time, uh, Git will continue to track its modification. I don't need to add it every time. And so uh, add vary. And I made this commit. And I see that right now in the project, I have an history of two versions. The first version and the version with comment very good. Okay, and every version also has a, a code here, a number down here, which is the hash code of this revision. So uh, these numbers are uh, unique in the world. And you have these labels that tell us 
that this revision is the head revision so it's the newest one head is always uh, a marker for the newest version of the project so right now i'm working locally on my computer but i'm saving versions of the work that i'm doing in my computer i want to share it with someone else right to share it, I need, or I don't need actually, for, but the easiest way is to use GitHub as an external repository. So what can I do? I can go to GitHub in my, uh, your, in your own personal space, or in this case, in the space of our, sorry, of our organization. And we can create a new repository. So we are creating the remote. We give it a name, we can do, we can use the same name, git test, for example, or it can be any other name. So it's a repository for testing git function. And let's make it public. We will create an empty repository and we, we will later populate push our local repository into that. So don't uh, create a readme file here because otherwise you will have conflicts when you try to push because you are trying to push something into a repository that is not empty. Hmm? So don't do that. Just create a repository and GitHub will tell you, nice, the repository has been created. If you want, you could add other collaborators and what and whatnot to this project, but now it's empty. So you want to populate this uh, you need to push into it and so let's tell by chance by charm that we want to push into this repository again git repository the remote repository and uh, where is push push don't be fooled by the icon because git uh, uses the same icon for commit and for push blame, blame of them but the name is different so we are not committing anything now we didn't change anything we just have one version of the repository with two local modifications and we want to share them on github and so what we are trying to do is to push the content the current content of the master of our repository into a remote repository right now we know we need to tell by charm where the remote is so we need to define the remote this is of, of course the first time we share a project we need to define where it is and the remote is defined by a nickname which is your, often its origin I mean okay the, the true latest version is there and the address the URL that the local repository uses to uh, speak with the remote one and wh where do we pick this URL? From here. So every project has a specific address that can be reached in HTTPS or in SSH. But from PyCharm, it's, very, it's, it's more convenient using HTTPS because then you don't, de don't need to define which uh, the SSH keys and so on. So we can use this. We copy and paste it here. So we want to push our current repository link to the git test project working space to the git tech, github slash mei uh, 2017 slash git test. Yes. Right now, we should ask me from my password, of course. Come on. Let's try again. Okay, this is working. Yes, sorry, I understand why. No. 
I should use the system proxy. Probably you cannot connect. Oh, it's only for Herbertian. I'm not using Herbertian. So what's wrong with you? Okay. No, it's not okay, but it My guess is that is not connecting. Uh, I could use my computer, but then we only want record. Okay, imagine that it succeeded because I always have a backup, and so you have another project that it creates first. Uh, so the, which which is very similar. So you, so it's not called Git test, but test Git. And then we saw this is an issue of uh, the PyCharm configuration on the computer. Sorry for the time we wasted. So, but imagine we succeeded, okay? So we pushed the content of the local repository onto GitHub. And right now, okay, I only make, need to make this repository public uh, so that everybody can see it. And it contains uh, a couple of commits, uh, which are not exactly the same we made a second ago, but uh, they, are, they are similar now. OK, so this is our side. We are working on the project. We are committing locally, and we are pushing to, to GitHub. Now there is this other person on the other side of the world that wants uh, to collaborate with us. OK? So they want to work on this project. So imagine that these people, they are a real nerd, and they work on the command line and don't use PyCharm. It's not an issue. OK? So they will create a directory, for example, uh, projects. They go into projects, and uh, they want to make a copy create a local repository identical to the one that I already shared. Okay? This operation, taking a remote repository and creating a local copy from scratch, is called clone. So this person would do a git clone operation. So all the command line commands are always git something. On the slides that I'm not showing you, there are all the examples. Uh, so there are all the commands written. So. And so I want to clone what? I want to clone the, where is the address? Here. Under GitHub, if you are inside the project, you put the clone button, and the, it, will give, it will give you the URI, the URL for the project. So you copy that, paste it. So I paid git clone and the address of the repository. So we are taking the GitHub code and cloning it into a local repository. 
it didn't ask me for a password because the repository was public. Okay? And they can see, uh, sorry, I have a directory called test git if I go inside it. So you can, when you're working on the Raspberry, you can always give the same command on the command line. So that's why. That's easy.py, and uh, we can see it, and we can modify it, and so on. Huh? So this is the, the other version. Uh, I, I want to see the modification. Git log shows me the list of the commits. And uh, git status uh, tells me whether I have something modified or not. Working directory clean means that the working directory is aligned with the local repository. So right now we have three repositories. One on PyCharm of the first user, one on GitHub, and the third one here on the machine of the other developer. This other developer could change something. So we'll modify easy.py by adding another statement. For example, so we can run the new version, and Git will tell me, so Git status, sorry, will tell me that we are on branch master, and they have a change, not stage for commit, and the change is uh, the modification of the file is.py. So if I want to commit these files, uh, I need first to add or stage this file for commit and then issue the commit command. So I can add uh, all modifications, dot, the current directory, or the name of the file, but easy. So git status tells me now that the file is modified and these changes are to be committed. So on the next commit, they will be included. This is useful if we have a set of modification and we only want to commit some files, not others. So we can select when we do the commit, uh, which files. Otherwise, we just uh, add everything, and that's fine. And then we can commit. Uh, and the git commit opens an editor in which I can write uh, a simple message uh, for the new commit. And I save it. And now. The commit is made with this code, with dash code, with this commit message, one file changes, one insertion of a new modification. This one insertion is one line that they added into the file, okay? It's changed by inserting one new line. So right now, this modification is on the other developer's computer. If they want to share it back with the first developer, what they could do, is, what they should do, is to push these modifications back onto GitHub so that the other users could pull them from PyCharm. And pushing is easy as git push. How does it know about the remote to push with, to push to? Uh, because when I did the clone, it remembered it. Probably if I write git remote, uh, it will tell me, okay, this remote is origin, git uh, show remote. Uh, oh, git, uh, okay. I don't remember the command line version for knowing the, but it's already, you see that you already have this origin recorded. So if you git push, now it asks me for the password because the project is public for reading but it needs an authorized user for pushing. Okay, I don't need anything for committing because I'm committing locally, but I want, when I want to push, I need to push to a project where I have writing permission. So I, I insert my credential. And 
now it's on the remote. So right now we have a log of three different commits. And, I, and if I go to GitHub, I see that there are, now there are one to three commits this, with the same code, with the same numbers that I have here. It only lists uh, the, few the few first digits. Here yeah, we have the full set of digits, uh, but GitHub is, uh, or in general, Git only shows the first ones. Uh, uh, unless uh, it creates ambiguity, then it will show more. But internally, internally, we always use the long version. But for the user interface, it's only just that easy. E0795 is here. It identifies this specific commit, the one that I made uh, uh, four minutes ago. So on the other side, we could, uh, we could have shown that uh, uh, this user could uh, pull back uh, some uh, uh, these modifications into his project. And so the operation is uh, the reverse, uh, is good, git pull, that will pick uh, the uh, modification from the other project. But I suspect that I don't have any remote here because I didn't, uh, I couldn't do it before. <coughs> hmm? But at the end, after the pool, trust me and try it on a computer which is not limited in connectivity, um, you will see the three commits here in the same way. So you, will have, you have a run trip of modifications. When you modify on PyCharm, what you have to do is just uh, at the beginning, git add all the new files that you create or the new folders that you create, and then to keep them updated, uh, uh, commit. And the commit dialog, okay, in this case, no, but uh, let's make a modification. On the commit dialog, you always have the option that you can use here to commit, just commit, or commit and push at the same time. So if you, if you are connected to the, to the network, it's useful to, to push immediately. Okay, it's a bit slower because you need to go there and encrypt the communication, but then it's already pushed immediately. Otherwise, you just commit locally, and at the end, you decide to push when you modify. And when you want to update from the other people's modification, it's easier because you just have to pull from here. And... Uh, Okay, what, what is that? VCS, git, pull. Here we will list, you will have origin here, and uh, with pull, uh, it will uh, just pick and merge the modification. On the other side, here on the command line, the main commands were um, clone, git clone for creating the first version of the repository from GitHub, git commit, git add, git push, and of course, git pull. If somebody modifies the remote GitHub, you could also pull the latest modification. In this case, there's nothing new because nobody modified that. So there are this handful of commands that you can use on the command line if you want. So you can use git uh, by charm or the command line as you wish. <coughs> so, the use cases are create a new project on, on PyCharm, create a repository, commit into the repository, and push the repository. This is the first chain. And then you can start commit, pull, uh, commit push, and pull. And on the other side, pull modify, add, commit, and push. Always this, this cycle of, of operation. What happens uh, at the beginning if you want to start from scratch with a new project? For example, in the lab, you already had this uh, 
projects here, okay? For working, starting point for working, lab two. So how can you work on this? The easiest way. So right now, all the files are on the repository, created by someone else. I could, uh, I know I can clone it and create a new PyCharm project from that. What is the option? The option is two different places. BCS, check out from version control, git. So in this case, you are pulling out, checking out from the version control a new project. The same option, you also find it here when you close the project. Here, you have the create new project option, open an existing project, or check out from version control. It's the same. If you go there, it will ask you the, the URL of the project. And I, I don't know if it's working now. But probably not. Sorry. Copy and paste. So this is the name of the project, of the URL of the repository, of the remote repository. And right down we have the name of the local folder in which you want to check out the project, in which you want to have the working copy and the local repository. And we can clone it. And it's not working because PyCharm can't access the internet. I need to find where to set the proxy in PyCharm. Because this computer is not directly connected, we need to use the. Remember that the first class we couldn't use Chrome, okay? Because the the proxy was uh, the proxy was not set, and uh, PyCharm has an internal one. We need to find that where where to set. So this is the the, the missing operation that we see we didn't see the, in the first uh, workflow uh, about how to create not to create a new project but to start from an existing project, Closing, cloning in PyCharm. It's called import from version, uh, sorry, check out from version control. The missing case is when you want to create, uh, if you want to create a new project uh, on the command line. So in PyCharm, we learned that new project uh, and then import into version control, commit push. How can we do that in the on the command line? It's easy. So we can create a new project here New project. This is a normal new pro, new normal director. New, we can just edit a new .py file. I am new. Okay. Python new. Dot pi. Hmm? Okay. So this uh, is again a project, a directory in Python, there's no such thing as a project, um, with no source control. We can uh, create a new local repository for this project. The comment is very easy git init, initialize the repository. You must be into the directory. You do git in it, and it creates a new repository into the folder new project slash dot git. You see now that now the, the directory contains new dot pi, which is our file, and a, a dot git subdirectory with all the files that git needs to work. Right now, git status, the repository is empty because we didn't add the first file yet. So we need to add everything and then commit first commit. Okay. And now we say that, okay, we committed everything. The working directory is clean. 
and uh, in the git log, uh, you see that we have one commit uh, of these files. Hmm? So, is this, now, right now, the only difference was uh, the git uh, init at the beginning here. Because we didn't have, in the first case, in the first example, we created the repository by cloning an existing one. In this case, we created a repository from scratch by initializing an empty one. And we want, if we want to share it on GitHub, on the command line, it's easier, it's even easier, because GitHub will already tell us what to do. If I go there and I create a new project, a new project, the name was uh, new project. Public. Create repository. Okay, I created an empty repository on GitHub and I want to push my local repository there. And these are the suggestions. Uh, GitHub tells me, okay, but if you want to add something, you, you need first to create some, initialize, we already did it, adding some file, committing locally, we already did every, uh, all, all these steps. What we need is to specify on the local repository that the remote address to use for origin is this one. And then push. So we just copy these two lines. Copy, paste, git remote add origin. It didn't push yet, it just recorded the URL of the, of the origin remote. And then now we push. Sorry, paste. And now it pushes. And this option, minus dash, dash u, it means uh, set the links, remember the links between the local and the remote, uh, and uh, say, okay, we track the remote branch master for origin. So the local branch and the origin remote branch are now linked, uh, and so every time we do pull or push, uh, it already knows which branches to match. Hmm? But we just copy that and it works. And if we refresh this page, we find our new project with uh, the commit that we made on the command line. So it's not that difficult. Huh? It's a bit complex to be oriented at the first sight, but then the workflow is always the same. Okay? And at, this mo at that point, uh, if the internet was working, we could take this URL and clone it into PyCharms, uh, but uh, hopefully next time I will be able to, to show it to you live. Hmm? Okay, any question? So from now on, my suggestion is uh, to start using GitHub uh, every day, especially for the work you do in the course. Okay, in, uh, in some cases we saw people that just work on their own, on their computer, I don't know how, and they, at the end of the course, they commit the final version. Okay, it's not good for you, I don't care. We only will check the final version. But it's better for you as a team and as individuals and the programmers to start using these tools. You can work on the repositories that we will create after, at the end of this week uh, for the group, uh, or you can work in your own personal repositories uh, if you want uh, uh, to start working on some master. Okay? See you all on Thursday.